Welcome back, everybody. This is Jason Mark Campbell on the Selling with Love podcast. And what I wanted to discuss today is one of the key things that make us attractive if we're going out there to sell. And what I love to see now is the evolution of social media, the platforms that allows us to share content, that allows us to be able to do research on the internet before we get in contact with anybody that we potentially want to do business with. We've seen our own behavior. If we're going out to buy from someone, what is one of the key activities that we consistently do anytime we're about to do business with someone is we will go to our friend Google or your preferred search engine, but I'm pretty sure the majority of us are still on the Google train and we will Google that person. What will we find? Then we'll take that same name of brand or name of person and maybe we'll look for reviews and then we'll try to read what we can find on this person. What have they shared before? What do they stand for? Are they the real deal? Are there any kind of feedbacks? Can I see their website? Can I see what's going on? And when we look at our own behavior, we can use that as an indicator on how we can best present ourselves whenever we want to sell our products and services. And so one of the things I wanted to prescribe for you as you listen to this episode is to think of what are the powerful things you could do to make sure that when someone does land on you, that you are positioned in the most powerful way possible. So it's not just a stranger that picks up the phone and calls a random number. Rather, if you're reaching out, say via email, or maybe you're sending a message on the social platforms, or maybe you are picking up the phone and reaching out to someone, they're going to go and look at who you are. Can they find you? What are the things we can do so that if they do find you, they find the right kind of information? And I wanted to give a few different things that you could do, which uh, what I like to call this is the zero moment of truth, because the zero moment of truth is that Google moment when we're going to start looking into what we find about a person. So the first prescription I wanted to give here for anybody that's going to put themselves out there and they are going to be around, you will be Googled. There's a couple platforms you want to make sure that are optimized. For one, your LinkedIn ends up being a very powerful platform. And the reason I start with LinkedIn is because something really interesting happened when LinkedIn was growing and it allowed them to get so many users so fast. LinkedIn has an incredibly high ranking on Google. If you look for someone that simply has social media profiles, you could find their Instagram, you could find their Facebook, you could find their LinkedIn, and the LinkedIn usually happens to be the first one. They did an incredible job opening up everybody's profile that are all searchable and properly indexed. So even if you're not an active user of LinkedIn, this is something that you might want to maintain and organize so that at least it looks like a brochure. And I don't encourage anybody to treat LinkedIn just like a brochure, but at a minimum, you'd want it to say the right things. Is the picture updated? Does the headline on the page say exactly what you do? Do you have a beautiful banner that explains a little more? And any of the information, is it up to date? This is like your CV for you if you want to get a job or you want to build a business. This is going to be a snapshot of who you are and how you operate. So make sure you take a moment to update this and make it as most representative to who you are because this will be found and searchable. And as such, you want it to represent truly who you are. If say you're starting a side gig and you might have started your LinkedIn and it speaks to your past, maybe you're working in government procurement, yet you just started as a coach. Well, if somebody you reached out to for coaching goes to your LinkedIn profile and speaks about you being in government procurement, then they might be wondering, am I speaking to the right person? There's an element of confusion. And the moment you get confused, you do not feel excited about saying yes. We already have so much information. When we go and do a research, we want to make sure things align and things are congruent. So make sure you're optimized based on what is the biggest priority that you have as terms of what you're selling. Now, if you are looking to get a promotion in procurement and you're continuing your career in that path, then of course you would keep it to highlight what is the work that you do in that field. But more than likely, most of you are starting businesses at the early stages. That is a key thing that you'd want to have set up as a basis. So the LinkedIn, make sure it's updated, make sure it's representative is going to be one of the powerful things you can do to ensure that when people find you, things align. The second thing is 
to look at any of the other pro profiles. And I put these in one bucket because it depends on which one you use. If you're using the Instagram, if you're using the Facebook, the TikTok, whatever those platforms are, take a moment to do a quick audit of everything and make sure the descriptions and everything that you find there are quite aligned. If coaching is the business that you're in, perhaps having the word coach in every one of those profiles so that if someone looks, for example, Jason Mark Campbell coach, then the right platforms are gonna come up. Of course, add your own name in the process. So the second thing is looking at everything else and ensuring that there is some sort of job description or keyword, including an optimization around what you do. So it's very easy for it to rank up and look amazing. The third thing is you will notice for anyone who's generating any kind of traffic, influence, having a lot of eyeballs on them, they are doing something to be attractive. And the way to be attractive is to educate and share. See, marketing is not about putting ads and flyers about, you know, buy now, buy now. That's not the way we attract people. That's actually how we push them away. If you're profiles only are putting out ads and trying to tell people to buy, buy, buy without having built trust or earned the right to get the attention from people, then you're going to actually hurt yourself in the process. So the key way to earn trust and to get attention from people is to educate, share and give. Do you have a content platform in place, a, a strategy around creating content? For example, in my case, the podcast ends up being what I call my pillar content creation platform. I record these podcasts and then I can use them on different platforms. But when you're just getting started, you don't need to be everywhere all the time. You want to start one place and do it well, and more importantly, do it consistently. Do you have a calendar? Do you have a cadence? And is it something you can commit to maybe once a week to write something if writing is your medium? Medium, Or once a week, you make a video and that ends up being your medium. What I will say about video as a benefit is there's more people that are shy about doing video. So it makes you stand out if you do. And whatever you use in video, you can use in audio and you can transcribe into written as well. Now, you don't need to have the perfect video, the perfect camera, the perfect microphone, have everything distributed on every platform, transcribe, rewritten and maximized as you build a media empire when you're just getting started. Find that one medium that makes sense to you and do it consistently. If you have a calendar and set a date where you'll consistently do it. I said once a week and for most of you who are going to be in marketing already will probably realize that once a week is probably not enough. But once a week is better than committing to three times a week and being overwhelmed by it and not doing it at all. So start with someone that you know someone. Start with something that you know you can commit to. And from there, keep expanding as you're building momentum. And the key here is because you want to show some longevity. You want to show that you're into this for the long run. And for again, somebody that's going to come and explore who you are and what you're about, say that you're posting regularly on LinkedIn. When they see your profile, they'll see that you're more than a brochure. You're actually a continuous stream of education. They have reasons to follow you. They have reasons to see you when they log on the platform because every time you post, you get shown to the people you're connected with. They'll know what you do. They'll be reminded of what you do and they might become your clients in the process. And only then is when I'd say you can start with your fancy bells and whistles, which would be getting your own website and getting that designed. So I wanted to do this in an order that you can understand why it's in this specific order, because so often when we get started, we're like, first thing we'll do is we'll build this website. Oh my God, building a website is so daunting. There's so many moving pieces. I know some of the best people charging 30,000 for three months of coaching and support for businesses that want to have better alignment with their strategy don't even have a website because they're focused on sharing on the right platforms and then they have conversations with people and truly want to help them. So the website ends up being the last of these pillars. Start with updating the LinkedIn that because it will show so well on Google when they search for your name and you want it to be accurate. Then have a tweak and a peek at every other platform to make sure that everything is aligned. Then you want to have this cadence of content so that you're actually sharing and only commit to something you can do regularly. I said once a week, if that's even too much, do it once a month because time flies by fast and you would realize that if you wait for a year and you keep doing it, you'll already have 12 pieces that you've decided to create and you might have started the momentum already. 
but you'll probably want to go faster than that. But start with something easy. And then finally, you can look at, okay, how do I design the websites? How do I start creating more tools using technology and investing more into my business? These would be the steps I would share for you to actually stand out and be attractive whenever you're getting started in business. Because when people engage with you, they do the search and they find you, everything will be concurrent. They'll see what you are about. And maybe, just maybe, they'll end up being some of your paying clients and you'll continue to do business with them for the years to come, creating a ripple effect, case studies, a growing business, and then you can get invested so much more into the media side as you're generating revenue in the process. I hope this was helpful. Let me know, of course, if you connect with me on LinkedIn is a beautiful platform that I love to have conversations with people. I would love for you to reach out connect with me. Let me know if this was useful. And if you've shared some of your first pieces of content, I would love to see them. So share them to me on LinkedIn. And with that, keep putting yourself out there and keep selling with love.